Good. We're going bowling. You got this? Proud, uh, obviously, of our team. Um, it's been a long season for us. Um, you know, we very rarely talk about injuries, and we don't make excuses uh, for our team to come up, uh, put it together today. I think all three phases contributed in some form or fashion. wasn't pretty, but it was enough. Um, really proud of the 25 seniors. I keep talking about those guys because I understand what they've endured. Um, they've done a great job of leadership. They've continued to practice to the standard that we set. Uh, really happy for those guys. And again, as I said earlier, you know, also some of the guys that aren't here that played a major part in us building this thing. And as I told our team, you know, this is the end of our 21 season and the bowl uh, opportunity starts our 22 season, which for us, it's all about continuing to develop our program. and. This, this opportunity gives us a chance to do that. And really, really proud of the guys, really, really proud of their effort. And I'm um, looking forward to uh, developing our team with these bowl, bowl, bowl opportunities that we'll have. And so with that, I'll open it up to questions. Network solutions, managed IT, and technical support. Viner Forgates makes your company work. Maryland's legal newspaper has named the Jacklets Law Group the very best, best personal injury trial firm and best civil litigation firm in the entire state. If you're hurt, listen to my mom and bite back with the big dogs. The Jacklets Law Group. At 855-BIG-DOG-1. Don't just get a lawyer. Get, get the, the lawyers. lawyers. Well, obviously, yeah. I mean, we hadn't had opportunity to go to a bowl game here since 2016. Um, you know, the last time I was here as an assistant, we went to back-to-back -back bowl games. But for us, as we embark on year three or year four, this was a necessary step. You know, that step from non-bowl eligibility to becoming a bowl eligible team. What we want this is to become the standard. And teams that go to bowls have more opportunities to develop their team. And that's what these next practices and these next few weeks will be all about uh, developing some really talented young players that I think you had a chance to see out there today that made plays from our quarterback who's a redshirt sophomore to Kobe McDonald to Daryl Jackson and some of these young players uh, that really have contributed. These would be really important for our program and we needed these practices. I just wanted to hear a little bit about what you thought of Brian Cobb's performance and maybe how it was a culmination of all the potential that you've kind of seen in him and have been talking about all season. Yeah, I was happy for Brian. You know, Brian is one of those 25 seniors that you know, I keep alluding to that uh, really ha has bought into the culture that we're trying to establish that, you know, and he's played an integral role from a leadership standpoint and really embodies the unselfishness that's necessary in any type of program when you're building it. And to come in and have players like him and Latez Rogers and uh, you know some of these veteran seniors that have been through an awful lot, uh, you know you can't begin to measure the amount of uh, what he brings to the table if you just look at a stat sheet. Uh, to me, you got to be there every day at practice to see him when he's not maybe as uh, involved in this offense that he that maybe he would like, but he's still out there leading and leading by example with how he performs and practices every day. Coach, uh, the game hinged on four times your defense stops Rutgers on fourth down. What did it take to develop to that point, and how proud are you of how the guys played when it was crunch time? Yeah, I think, you know, last week I talked about we didn't coach very well and we didn't play very well. Well, this week I thought our defensive coaching staff, uh, you know, we made some tweaks there. We put Stu up in the box. Brian Williams became a lot more involved with how he did, how he called things there. and. I thought it was an overall great effort by our defensive staff and the players. Um, understanding that, you know, Rutgers was a dangerous team that really relies on some of the trick plays that have uh, gave them opportunities down the road. Uh, we had to play with great eye focus and eye discipline. Um, I thought we did a really good job in situational defense and 
you know, our guys made the plays when we needed them to be made, especially down there at the fourth and the goal line play. Uh, those guys, our D-line came up big, and, and I thought our coaches did a good job putting a good plan together. Uh, obviously, when Rutgers in the second half started to push back a little bit, you guys kind of you know drove the hammer down and didn't let them didn't let them come back. Kind of how how pivotal is that to you know like to, to you guys going forward that to make sure you can sort of finish games like that? Yeah, I mean it doesn't help. Um, you know, with the return game again, our kicking game kind of took away momentum a couple times in the game. The blocked extra point for two, uh, a couple of returns when we you know score. And they give up big returns where our defense played with short fields. Uh, those are the things when I talk about these extra practices, these allow us to really develop that our special teams and our, you know, the young players that are involved there to, to, to understand what we need to do to get accomplished. But our defense stood tall. Um, they gave up a couple of scores there, but our offense answered. And that's where I felt, you know, for the first time we kind of played complimentary football where even though they scored, our offense came back and matched it. And we did it running the ball, which, you know, again, that was great to see us be able to establish, you know, Fleet Davis and Kobe McDonald today. We got into some personnel groupings that we hadn't used all year. Our 12 personnel having two tight ends on the field. And it gave us a, a, a great answer. Michael, in, in a season of ups and downs, what's it like for you? The end of the game, the team poses under the goal post for a picture. There's a lot of smiles. And I assume it was the same way when you went into a locker room. I mean, what's it like for you to see that? You know, to, to, for me, th that's what Maryland's all about, and that's what Maryland means to me. You know, I came here to build a program that our former players, that all of our fans could be really, really proud of. Uh, this is just one step. Uh, we talked about taking the next step. And that's being bowl eligible. Now the next step for us is to build upon what we've established, the culture, the identity. Um, we have young players that I think gives us a bright future. Uh, I love the way our seniors are leaving a foundation of what leadership looks like as we bring in the right kind of players. But to me, you know, to be able to, you know, take that picture and, and as I told our veteran players, you know, this was going to be their Christmas card. This was going to be uh, my Christmas gift to them. If they came up here and took victory, uh, we go stand under that goalpost, get the score in there, and uh, send them home with a nice uh, victory picture. And this is the end of our 21 season. And so it also gives us the start of the 22, which is the bowl prep. Take one or two more. Uh, um, it seems like a lot of things you guys that have hurt you in the past, whether it be turnovers or explosive plays and penalties and all those things, that, were much better today. Is there a reassurance in that that some of those things that hurt you didn't show up in this game? I mean, I think what it shows our players, and we talk about it, we have a thing on offense called our margin of error, where it really is a barometer that I learned under Coach Friesian of what it takes to not beat yourself. Good teams don't beat themselves. And today, I don't think we had a turnover. It's hard for me to, I haven't looked necessarily at the stat sheet completely, but when you don't turn it over and you win the explosive play battle, that's the winning formula. On the defensive side of the ball, you know, we got a couple turnovers or we got maybe one. And when we have the opportunity where we limit the other team's explosive plays, you'll give yourself a chance to win. To me, that's where college football is gone. That's what we've got to be more consistent at doing as a team. Uh, and obviously one of the big seniors who kind of had his best performance like ever was Tam Fleet Davis. You know, he's been, you kind of talk about all the adversity he's been through himself as long along with the program. Kind of what is having a day like that, you know, mean to you, mean to him uh, as he's kind of going out trying to put you guys on your back? Yeah, I think what you see in, in, in Fleet is Fleet is a, a byproduct of what I hope this program does for players. Uh, got it, ran into some trouble here during his career, missed games a year ago, continued to mature because of the systems that we put in place, the resources that we have available to to make sure that we're teaching these young men that it's not just about winning on the field, but winning off the field. And uh, Tayon's a poster child for me as to what this program should do for individuals. And when they come here uh, as parents, they're not always going to be perfect, but we will strive to teach them from the mistakes they make. And I'm proud of Fleet, really excited to see how he's been able to finish. And then he's also been one of our greatest leaders and one of the greatest assets to our program. So to have him back and we gave him a COVID year after having to miss most of last season, couldn't be more proud of Fleet and his maturity that he showed. Thanks coach.
Thank you. We're going bowling. <laughs>